Welcome back to another episode of the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. I'm still World Voice of Gold Grizzlies. Of course, he is the coach, Greg Campy. Kim, how you doing, man? Doing good. I uh, want to start the show tonight with a couple shout-outs, though. Uh, well, Barb and Tom are not here tonight. Uh, you know, Tom, something, I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but I know he's in the hospital. Um they were supposed to go on playing with us tomorrow to the Bahamas and they're not going to be able to go. So uh, whatever it is, you know, we're praying for you and we miss you here and, uh, you know, just get better. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Very well said. Yeah. yeah. And then the other shout out is to my mom. She turned 96 and uh, she, she can't come to the games anymore, but she wears an open shirt and watches them. Well, listens to you, Neil, and for some reason she loves you. I, I have no idea how that. And I tell her every time I talk to her, no, I, that's that's but, not true, right? Yeah, but she she thinks you're something special. So, well, it's, at least you have one fan. I got one fan. Uh, my mom. So yeah, two, two moms. Two, yeah, <laughs> two moms. That's that's what it is. Um, so yeah, that no, that's awesome though. Appreciate uh, uh, dressing those camp and uh, yeah, you know, um, Saturday, you know. It, it was it was electric and camp you've been in this a long time and it was something you keep bringing that up well it, it's a, i've been in a long time with him yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what i'm saying so yeah, okay um <laughs> but you don't you don't my point about it is like people ask me that was awesome that was a great game you know we were watching it and stuff like that you don't get a lot of those you know what i'm saying like the overtime the back and forth the storylines all that the crowd all of it and you don't you don't get a lot of those, do you? Yeah, I mean, it, it just the way it played out, you get more than you think, but the we really needed to win. I mean, it was a game we needed to win for the psyche of the team, for the psyche of the fan. Well, it was an unbelievable schedule we had at home in the non-conference, and you, it's so hard to get a schedule like that. And so... You know, if, if we'd have gone through that and not gotten that win, too, after, the, you know, the large crowds for Bowling Green, the near sellout for Oklahoma State, and then the sellout for Eastern Michigan, you know, that, that you don't want your fans walking away disappointed. And, you know, only so many times can you say that was a great game. And so to be able to win it and win it the way we did to persevere through, you know, again, you know, we've the last few years we've had a real problem keeping a lead late. And, uh, you know, we're a great free throw shooting team, yet we seem to miss some free throws. And uh, we were able to still find a way to win it. And early early in the season, that can really, really help us. And uh, I think we grew up a lot in, in, in that game. And, and walking into the locker room and talking afterwards, just the feeling of, you know, you get this invincibility that you can win no matter what. And that's what great teams come, are able to do. I mean, look at Michigan's football team Saturday. You know, they found a way to win the game, and, and a, a guy came through and made a play. Now he's a great kicker. But can you imagine the pressure that was on that kid in that wind, in the cold, and in the bad circumstances? And what's at stake? And what was at stake? And I know he's a great player, but great players make plays. And, you know, Trey Townsend is a great player for us, and he made plays down the stretch. And as, as injured as Jalen's been, and he still keeps fighting through, and he's, you know, he's had a couple plays not go his way. Maybe he's taken a couple shots he probably shouldn't have taken, but he, you know, he wants to win so bad, and they got the win. And the feeling in the locker room, uh, boy, we needed that. We needed that win, and we needed it, and our fans needed it too. I really, you know, I, I think we all – needed that even the, the truest bluest fan that's going to be there no matter what needed that win so it was a great day for us yeah and that certainly is the case remember you can get involved on twitter send us a tweet with the hashtag ask campy anywhere inside the tweet and we will get to it and we will read it here tonight it's a good way for you guys to get interactive with the show as well and uh also too 
Big shout out to our guy Greg Hessen back in our 1270 97.1 HD3 studios, mixing and scratching everything that's going on as well. And as always, Greg Campy Show brought to you by Henry Ford Sports Medicine, official team physicians for Oakland University and you. For more information, visit henryford.com backslash athletes. Camp, you know, the thing that I walked away with too from that game Saturday, because I recognized it the second I saw it early on in that game. And, you know, obviously a lot of people keeping tabs on what Imani Bates doing and, and everything that, that he brings along with him. I asked you this in the press conference. I'll say it, I'll say it again for maybe those that missed it. You guys seem to use a lot of Antoine Davis principles on him. Is, is that true or no? Um, I think it looked more like that than it probably was true. And the reason for that is, you know, Monty Bates is a great player and he's going to make money. Uh, but Farrakhan, the point guard for them, uh, he's real, he was really, really good. And we knew that he had 30 against us last year. So it, and Antoine Davis in the, you know, the four years that we've played against him, he's really not had a supportive player. He's had some, you know, water, Waterman or whatever his name was, and a couple of those guys were good players, but not an all-star level player with him. Right. And so you can't really employ those, quote, like Jordan rules, you know, against Bates like we, we did with Davis. And we're not going to be able to do with Davis this year because, you know, they're proving that a kid, another kid today get 25 points or something like that. So... You know, we, we threw some things at him, but the, the reality of it is, is he had 19 points with about 13 minutes to go in regulation and he didn't score again. And you can, you can, uh, he can blame Rocket Watts for that and Osei Price. And you know, Rocket did an unbelievable job on him. And when Rocket went down, Osei came in and, and he continued that. Only fouled once. So I think they called a wrap up foul on Osei uh, late in regulation. Uh, but guarded him without following him. Um, and, and I thought that, I think the play of the game, and I, I think everybody that was there will agree with when Amon, uh, when uh, Farrakhan drove the lane and Trey blocked his shot out of bounds and then they threw it in and Amani shot it. Amani shot it and Trey blocked that one back to back blocks within about 10 seconds. For a team that can't guard anybody, that was pretty impressive defense. And I think that really, it brought the crowd into the game, and I think it it took some wind out of their sails. And late game like that, it's so emotional, it's so uh, momentum that it really swung it our way, and we found a way to win. Yeah, first half, uh, Eastern Michigan shot 35% against you guys, but most importantly, in overtime, 29% from the floor. And when it was winning time, you guys locked it down. I mean, you just did. I thought the first half was our best defensive effort of the year. Um, we're, teams are shooting it extremely well against us in, in the early season. And I will tell you that um, it concerns me a little bit, but it's also a very small, uh, a very small sample size. You know, sample size. And our, our analytics show that Usually, if you can test a three, a heavily contested three, they usually shoot it at about 20-some percent. Right now, our heavily contested threes against us are over 40 percent. So we know that the mean's going to come in, and it's going. we're going to be fine. We're getting better defensively. We're going to give up more points, and if you analyze our defense by points per game, it's a, it's a bad way to do it because we played it. We, we had almost 90 possessions in that game. So 80, I think it was 87 possessions. When you have 87 possessions and give up 92 points, that's not bad defense. If you have 60 possessions and give up 62 points, that's not bad defense. You know, anytime you give up about a point of possession, that's, that's, the that, that's really good defense. So while it doesn't look that good because it's a high pace, fast pace, it's uh, it, it wasn't as bad as it looked. And, and Cam, you've been talking about that for years, and, it, and it's something that I didn't even think about at first, but when you start looking at it analytically, and the, the reason I bring that up is because – well, I was having conversations with, with some of my friends uh, that, that were Michigan basketball fans. And, but they asked me, I think it was on Thursday, they said, man, are you, know, are, are you guys going to defend at all this year? And, you know, we gave up 112 to Toledo and stuff like that. And I kind of asked them, I said, well, are, are you guys going to defend at all? Because I watched Arizona State, you know, shoot 62% from the floor, be like 1.25 points per possession against them. It's that is something that 
I think over the years, Camp, because of the way that you played, it's become kind of an unfair stigma because when you break it down analytically, that's where the more possessions you have, the more points you're going to give up. I'm not even a math major, Camp, but I know that. Yeah, it is, but, but you know, fans are fans, and no matter what, they're going to analyze it the way they want to analyze it. The bottom line is, is how we analyze it and how we go about our business. And it's still a bottom line business. you got to yeah. win the game, and whether you win 92 to 90 like we did, or, you know, 65 to 60 like we did last year, it, it's still the bottom line is whether you win or lose. And the style of play, I think, is a lot more fun to watch than like the 65 to 60 games. So, I like it a lot more. Yeah. I'm just, I like calling it a lot more. I'll say, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, coming up later on, second segment of the show, we'll be joined by Trey Thompson. He will be here in the house at RJ Pubs. Hashtag Ask Camp. He got a question for Trey. Fire it away. I'll ask him when he comes up here. So we'll talk to him coming up in just a couple minutes as well. And don't forget the Ask Camp tweets. That'll be third segment of the show. And then we'll take a look ahead to the Bahamas. Uh, actually, the team rolling out tomorrow. We'll discuss that coming up in the fourth segment of the show. So that's kind of the run of things. Uh, Will Shepard, 4-4 four four from behind the three-point line. How much does that change everything? Well, I think that you have to really give Will – and Chris Conway, uh, Chris had seven points in eight minutes or something like that. But he, but more importantly, he had a couple really, really, really big rebounds that were man-like rebounds that were trying with his size and his body to, to that become a constant. And both of them played their best minutes against a in a close game against a good team that we've had in their careers. And we started Will because it's time to find out about him. You know, we kind of babied him through last year and we were babying him through this year a little bit. And it's just, you know, it was time to time to throw him out there and find out because I get mad at him a lot. And he's, and Will's a shooter. He was recruited here as a shooter. I've said over and over again, he's, he's probably the best shooter I've been around over six, six that, that we've had. And nobody else would know that because they don't see practice every day and they don't see what he can do. And, you know, he wills a four point student, but on the basketball court right now, he's about a one five. And, you know, he needs minutes and he needs to play and he needs to be able to make mistakes uh, to get where he's comfortable. We need his shooting. You know, we really do. We need that. That that will make so much more room for Trey Townsend in there. It will make so much more room for Jalen Moore on his drives to the basket. And so he's somebody that we we want to play. We need him on the floor and we want him to play, but he needs to play. You know, his basketball IQ has got to get more up to a, you know, a three point than, than it is right now. And, and playing will do that. He's so afraid to make mistakes. He's, he's, you know, but boy, he was good. Saturday, I think he's got a lot of confidence now. He feels good about a shot. The first three shots today he shot in practice were terrible air balls, you know. So it was, it was kind of funny to watch that. But, you know, I didn't say a word to him. I just let him shoot through it. And, you know, he's a guy that can really, really help us. And then Chris Conway can too. If The best part of Chris Conway is it takes Trey away from the basket defensively. And I'd really like to play Trey more at the top of the zone or in, at the nail uh, free throw line in, in, in the zone. Um, I think that's a better rebounding position. I think he, he played more there Saturday and he, and he had higher rebound numbers. Where we bury him at the basket, it's hard for him to rebound because he's putting bodies on big guys all the time. And Where he can come in and use his athleticism like Jamal did last year. Jamal rebounded so well for us because of the position he played in the zone. And if I can get Trey in that position more, I think you'll see his rebound numbers go up higher. And so both Chris and Will are really, really important to us if we're going to reach our A potential of this team. Kim, I like that you clarified the nail. <laughs> uh, for you know, for, for for the for the youngsters out there uh, that that are that are listening to the show right now, that are here, uh, you know, at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills as well. Where, where did that term come from? Because I, I hear an announcer use it every now and then. Well, if you go onto any wood basketball floor and you walk to the free throw line, and you'll see guys when they shoot free throws, they look down, and what they're looking for is a little indentation where, for some reason. They put a nail there when they build the court and then they use that like a compass to draw the circle for the paint. And so that indentation is left. And on any court you go in to whenever you walk up to the free throw line, 
you can see it. So, so many times as a coach, you're yelling at a kid, I need you here, I need you here. And many, many years ago, somebody said, get to the nail. And I think that just caught on and it's pretty much regular terminology in, in the basketball world. There you go, Austin. There, there, I saw you right there when he, when he was talking about it. I figured there was some clarification needed yeah. uh, on the nail. So there, it, informative and fun, the Greg Campy Show, both of those things. Number one ranked. Number one rated radio show on this station at this time. Seven years running. Mm-hmm. Marconi Awards. Let, let us know. Let us know where you're at. Uh, we're going to take a first break. When we come back, I'll be joined by Trey Townsend here. So if you got a question for Trey that we can read on the air, send me a tweet with the hashtag AskCampy. So we'll be right back with Trey Townsend and more. You're listening to The Greg Campy Show. Yeah, I know. What's good, man? All right, Jay's Pub here in Rochester Hills. Back at it with the Greg Campy Show. My name is Neil Rule, voice of the Golden Grizzlies. Coach Greg Campy steps aside for a second here. That's right. As we welcome in Trey Townsend here in the house to RJ's Pub for the Greg Campy Show. Trey, appreciate you. Ta- Look at that, man. <laughs> you hear that right there? Nope. You hear that right there? <laughs> Lots of love out there for yeah. Trey Townsend. Uh, no question about it. And, and Trey, look, I, I do want to chop it up with you. We'll talk. We'll talk about a lot of stuff. I'll ask if you. I'm going to ask you about the World Cup, obviously, since your brother plays That's for nice Eric good. Bogan on the men's soccer side. Uh, got to call his first career goal on ESPN Plus, which was very, very cool. Um, but you know, just just real quick, uh, just kind of reset what we were talking about that game on Saturday. Four thousand plus inside the arena. You had high-level, high-level players on both sides going back and forth. Great flow to the game. Tons of points over time. That was college basketball, wasn't it? 100%. You know, we knew as soon as we saw them on the schedule this year the, the amount of talent they had. Uh, a lot of local kids came back to that school. So it was going to be a – even though it was a home game, they were having a lot of fans there. And uh, they had a lot of Eastern fans show out. But the Grizz gang and our fans, they are best around in the country. And they showed out even more in that – uh got us to push them and win it over time. Yeah, absolutely. And that was something, too, and Coach Camby talked about it in the press conference. You brought it up as well. But just the energy in that building kind of carried you guys through it, didn't it? 100%. You know, my – our last year, was, we only – we did barely played many games at home before Christmas. So uh, it was great to see that many people come out to these early games beginning of the year because, you know, they're not really sure how the team is going to look until, you know, 10 or 12 games in. So it's great to know they have our back that early on and – like, you, like I told you in that post-game interview, our defense is uh, the key to this team, and having that energy outside uh, on our backs is boosts our defensive uh, 
energy and gets us going out there. Yeah, absolutely. It did. Now, now normally, you know, we do this segment with Campy. We have to ask Campy a segment of the show, but someone wanted to ask Campy about you. So I'm going to ask you about you. That's that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, Austin Davis wanted to know, it's a different focus on Trey Townsend's three-point shot in the offseason so far this year. It seems he has more than his uh, career total, and, and obviously six of seven at Toledo. You carried that over into the game against Eastern Michigan Tech on another one for three performance there. So, what's the answer to that question? Um, it was definitely the three point shooting was the main focus for my game this summer. Last year, uh, team started to understand that you know I was very comfortable in the post, and that was what I really wanted to go to. But now being able to expand it out uh, to that three point line just creates new uh, avenues for our offense. It really just takes pressure off of the inside of the paint for, you know, guys like Jalen to drive. And it even uh, gives me more uh, avenues for my offensive game itself. And, you know, that's something I met with Campy uh, right after the season last year. We had individual meetings. And the one thing he wanted me to do was make 45,000 threes this summer. And that's makes, you know, you've heard that you know, players doing that. So got those in the summer and it's starting to pay off uh, throughout the season. I'm happy to see it. You said 45,000 threes. Yes, sir. 45,000 threes like you shoot one okay there's one gotta make it yeah i'll miss that one all right made that okay there's two Forty-five thousand. Uh, i was talking to trey townsend here on the greg can't be show live at rj's pub in rochester hills um what about it too trey because as you talked about kind of opening up your game what i've noticed from calling you over these years your ability to get the ball on the wing and put it on the floor because you draw your big out because they have to they have to account for you. And this year, even more than ever, I've seen you be able to dust whatever big comes off. This is me saying this. It's not Trey saying this, by the way. But, I mean, yeah, you've, you've cooked every big that's come out at you in terms of going around them, and then you're moving downhill. That is kind of a, a, a side effect of that, right? As, as your three-point game evolves, you'll be able to do that more and more. 100%. You know, that's something uh, I was, like, recruited for out of high school to be a guard, a, sh a small forward, do more things on the perimeter. But the way things shook out that first year here, I uh, found myself at the five and kind of converted down to that. So um, uh, it's been nice uh, having that three, getting the three back under my belt, being able to uh, make people want to come and guard me outside the three. Because last year, if I were to go outside the three, more often than not, the bigs would be, you know, staying down the bank because I knew I was going to drive. But having uh, that confident three-point shot in my arsenal now brings them out. And, you know, I'm a guard at heart, so I feel like I can beat them uh, off, the, off the perimeter. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can take the kid out of the guard spot, but you can't take the guard out of the kid. Right? Talk with Trey Townsend here on the Greg Campy Show live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. But, but we have seen that before, and I think that that was really on display. I remember last year at the tournament in Florida, Rice had a big, almost a seven-footer uh, that they had. And you brought him out and just kept making mid-range jump shots over top of him, just, just pounding him, pounding him with that. Then finally he would come out, and then you went around him. I think you had 27 points in that game or whatever. I mean, you just you just went to work. Do you do you have a preference? Do you do you care how you beat these bigs? Do you what would you rather drive it? Would you rather shoot it? Do you, or do you not care? I mean, I always take the easiest basket and the easiest basket and that's supposed to live. So if I have an opportunity to score at the rim or get to the hoop, I would uh, choose that. But as I'm becoming more and more confident in my three point shooting, uh, you know, any any basket I could take, I'll take. And that's certainly something too, Trey. I mean, if you have aspirations of playing past college, that that's that's a non negotiable, right? And it, you have to make that shot. One hundred percent. You see, now everyone's in the in the NBA and any pro league, everyone's shooting threes, no matter their size. So that's also something I thought about this summer was the aspirations to play at that next level. I understood I have to become a you know a very good three point shooter. Like and, make forty five thousand uh, over a summer. Like that, like yeah. that good? Yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trey, for those that don't know, your brother plays on the Oakland men's soccer team, uh, Zach Townsend. And have, did you watch the World Cup at all today? How, how much? How much are you into soccer? So I actually played soccer growing up with Zach and all the way till about my high school. And I decided, you know, that's where it really gets to. You got to focus on soccer or anything else. So I kind of put it aside and Zach right. decided to stick with it. So I'm uh, very into the World Cup. My favorite uh, video game has been FIFA, which is a soccer game. So I I think I'm, I'm cultured enough on what's going on in the soccer world. So I was following along today uh, throughout my, my class. They'll keep that down a little bit. But oh, I was watching America was playing Wales today. Uh, fortunate uh, ending to that game, but it was still a 
cool to watch. Like, what what you what you think? Give me the breakdown, Trey. Like, uh, be be the sports analyst here. Give give me Trey Townsend's breakdown of the World Cup match. I know we well, can't be saying we're going to talk about World Cup soccer <laughs> on the show right now. I mean, you know, I, we barely had uh, many shots on, on goal. I think we only had one shot on goal. One so shot. One shot on goal. One goal. So you can't win very many games if you only put one shot on frame. And you know, it was just an unlucky way to end giving up a penalty at the end of the. At the end of the game, after playing so hard for it was 80, 81 minutes or so, we're thinking, all right, we just got to hold on for eight more minutes, and then you know, push game to shove, and it didn't go that way. But got the big one Saturday, and I'm not, I'm not honestly nervous about that with against England. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It'll be a two o'clock start, so uh, I think, yeah, that game's Friday. We play at eight. That game's at two, so I, I think we'll be okay right there. Okay. I, think, I think we'll be able to take care of uh, take care of watching that one. Talking to Trey Townsend here on the Greg can't be show what one of my favorite things though about world cup you step out like wales and in, in usa they step out on the pitch today your life is on the line like you show up man, this is cool it's a world cup the whistle sounds your life's on the line like like right there if you lose that first game the math says that you're out exactly you you, you like that do you like those kinds of moments i yeah i like the you know the pressure puts on everyone and especially that this event only happens every four years it's sort of like the olympics aspect where these people are training for so long just for this one moment so you know the pressure of losing that first game and the stats that you have such a slim chance of making it out of the group stage after that is you know makes it more exciting to watch it makes the players play even harder in the group stage even though technically it's not losing you done they still no one wants to lose those people. Well, games. that's why I think it's kind of unique in that with college basketball, it's probably the closest thing to that, right? When you guys show up in March, that's it. Like, your life is on the line. The second the ball goes up in the air, one team is, is going home right? every single time that you play. You guys are probably the most uniquely qualified to speak on. Exactly, especially for, a, you know, a program at our level with the, where it comes down to no matter really how you're doing in the regular season, it's all about March and how you perform in the tournament. So once the ball goes up there, like you said, on that first week of March, it's your career, especially, you know, for guys like our Jalen and Keaton on our team, this is, this is their last year for them. So it'll be a, you know, a lot of pressure, but you know, that's what you, you, you dream of playing for in those kind of games. And we're all excited for it. Uh, coming up this weekend, obviously at the Nassau championship down in the Bahamas, you water sports guy at all, big swimmer at all, or anything like that? Um, um, I actually uh, went wakeboarding this summer for the first time and ended up enjoying it a lot. I, I'd never done it before. I went with uh, my couple teammates, Cooper, Chris, and uh, Brody, and we had a good time out there on the lake. So I'm not, I'm not huge into it, I, but this is my first time doing it in the summer, so I enjoyed it. All right. Well, it's not all you know, fun and games and everything like that. There will be basketball played down there as trip, well. Yeah. yeah, it is a business trip, as you said. Now, you guys lifted, you know, guys, you guys lifted the hardware uh, last year down – in the Gulf Coast showdown. When you look at that trade, that tournament setup, three games, so you play Friday night, you play Saturday, I think either at 2 o'clock or at 8 o'clock. I mean, the games are just boom, 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 like that, three of them in three days. How much of, how much of that is basketball and how much of those tournament setups are attrition? Just that you have three games in basically, what, 70 hours or whatever the number is. How much of that is survival? You know, that first game, obviously, not as much about the survival because the first time down there, but it as the days go on, you realize you're playing so many games in 70 hours. So, like you said, uh, it becomes a, a wear on your body, but Camp does a great job, you know, making sure we're all on top of our bodies. He's not, you know, pushing us to the brink of collapse every single day. He understands how, uh, you know, what we need to succeed as athletes. And it kind of brings you back to those AAU days when you'd be playing uh, – uh, and those tournaments, you have like three in a day, games. right? Exactly, you're playing three or four games a day. Not that it's at the same uh, competitive level of Division One college basketball, but you know it's kind of a cool little flashback, nostalgic feeling. So you, you begin to enjoy it. You know, you just appreciate your playing basketball in a cool place like the Bahamas this year. Uh, I'll ask Campy this question a little bit later on, but I have you here, so I'll ask you. Long Beach State uh, last year, the Big West Conference champions. I believe they went to the NIT as well. Very, very talented basketball team how, how far along are you in the preparation for long beach state just you individually um as of now you know we're not super deep into it uh, i'm gonna be completely honest the only thing i really knew about their their program is they're out from california so <laughs> um i'm just gonna go into it you know playing my game and i'm not really 
Because there's a rhythm, there's a rhythm to this, right? In, in how you prepare with scouting reports and everything like that. There's a dedicated day where you kind of go deep. You'll get the film breakdown on, on who you're checking, who's going to be checking you. You look to see where you can take advantage of. Yeah, exactly. And we'll probably uh, get into that once we get down there. You know, we're getting down there a couple days early before we play, so which is nice. We need to adjust and, uh, you know, get comfortable down there, and that's we'll probably we'll dive into the scouting course with this team. Absolutely. Well, Trey, I appreciate you coming through here, man, for sure. Fans love you. We love we love talking to you. Appreciate you. No, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Trey Townsend, everybody, from the Overland and Overland and Grizzlies. When we come back, it's that time of the show. It's Ask Campy Time on Twitter. We'll be back with more of the Greg Campy Show. We are live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. So I was doing I I like a sporting event in the world camp by far can you like what you need. Yeah, there you go. Like, I mean, it's not a various mixed bag of things that people are doing. So, like, you're a thinker, you're a sport. You're a sport. You know, whatever. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, somebody, somebody wants to know your favorite Sada Baby song. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So somebody wants to know your favorite Sada Baby song. My, my favorite what? Sada Baby. He was the rapper that was at the game Saturday. Sada. S A D A. Sada Baby. You say more, more, more of a press candy fan. Somebody <laughs> back at it here the Greg, back to the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. My name is Neil Roll. Of course, he is the coach, Greg Campy. And the Greg Campy Show brought to you by farmer-owned dairy products from Prairie Farms. They're made with 100% real milk from local Michigan dairy farms. Prairie Farms, a proud sponsor of Oakland University Athletics. Campy, ready to hit the uh, Ask Campies? Sure. All right, let's do it here. This one that uh, put a smile on my face. Uh, BK McDonald wants to know, uh, hashtag Ask Campy, what's your favorite Sada Baby song? Uh, Sada Baby was at the uh, Oakland Eastern game at the arena on Saturday. Local Detroit rapper, got a pretty good following. You're more of a, you're more of a Press Campy fan, aren't you? The only rapper I follow is Press Campy, that's right. <laughs> and I'm not a fan of all his songs either. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm a fan of any of them, but my son, so I listen. I don't know who this guy is, so uh, sorry I can't answer that. No, I, well, I, I figured, you know. We'll was, he, was he cheering for Eastern or Oakland? No, he was cheering for Eastern. Yeah. I hope he paid for his ticket. <laughs> <laughs> there you have that, everybody. Uh, Nick Lucido, who's here in the house with the hashtag Ask Campy, who's New York Giants. Uh, took, speaking of taking L's, his New York Giants took an L yesterday. Uh, Nick Lucido asked, Will Shepard was unstoppable shooting against Eastern. Talk about his progression these past few games in the season. You touched on it a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it, it's something that's so massive for this team. Yeah, I mean, anytime you have a guy that can shoot 40% from the three with his size, you need that on the floor. It's spacing, especially when you have – Trey was a little undersized height-wise, not physically, but height-wise, you know, it pulls. It, it, most defenses want to build a wall around the best players. And when you can space that wall out with guys that can shoot, especially a six eight guy, um, that's going to make it easier for everybody else. And where you really saw it early in that game was he got wide open in a pick-and-pop situations. And in our offense where we have – alternating ball screens on each side of the floor. 
when he set his ball screen and popped, the defense went to the basket and he was un- all alone. By the end of the, uh, the end of, not the end of the game because he wasn't in at that time, but the end of his run out there when he popped, they were going to him, which opened up the other side of the floor and Trey got a couple uh, pick and roll layups on the other side because his man couldn't tag the roll man. And I don't mean to get too, you know. You want some salt and pepper shakers? Yeah, to, no, to but I, yeah I, I just don't want to get too technical in it. But right. So when you set a pick and roll and you have a guy like Jalen Moore coming off the screen, You've got to run two guys at him or show, and then you've got the guy rolling is going to be open, and you have to take a guy from the other side of the floor, but it's called tagging, and you get up to the midline and you tag him. Well, Will's man would be the guy tagging, but when he's making shots over here, he can't tag, and you saw Trey get a couple easy baskets because of it. So it, it really helps us and it really make our offense more efficient if he can continue to shoot that way and play with confidence. And then he got, he's got a rebound for us and guard the basket too, um, which, you know, not his strengths right now and he's getting better at, but again, playing time will, will make him better. And you can say, well, why don't you just play these guys and give them the playing time? And the bottom line is, is we're playing, we're, we're playing to win. Right. We're not playing for development. Yeah. Right. You know, if you want to play for development, then you're going to have, you know, seven and 21 years and then, couple of those and then you develop and you try and win we don't ever want to do that and i'm hoping that we develop them in practice and then some success in games will make them go and you know if he can take the next step now with confidence and that doesn't mean he makes all the shots next game but just plays confidently shoots confidently and gets us a few rebounds gets trey away from the rim defensively that will make us better along with conway yeah uh, seven to 21 years too many of those can't you get you develop at the unemployment you know, like yeah, that's, well, yeah, that's how it works. Don't think we've ever had one of those. So right. <laughs> we don't ever want to have one of those. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, remember, you can tweet your questions with the hashtag AskCampy. Yes, we did talk soccer on your show. We can't. We, we can't. Well, you'll see if you get paid this week. <laughs> All right. Our guy, Pittsburgh Marty, with the hashtag AskCampy. As you head out on your business trip to the Bahamas, what does the schedule for all of you look like besides playing games and practicing? Is there any time for fun? Uh, P.S. Can I come along next time? The weather in Pittsburgh uh, is it's kind of similar to Siberia, which is you know kind of what like it is here. But um, uh, what, what's that shaping up like? Any time for fun, Cam? Well, Marty, we're going to the Cayman Islands next year, and we're going to what we're looking into next year is getting a charter plane of about 80 to 100 and, and trying to get 40 to 50 of our fans to come with us. So, yes, he can come next year. It's going to cost you a few thousand dollars, but we'd love to have you. Um, but they are going to get a little time because we're going a day early because we are chartering this year. Um, the, the As anybody that's tried to travel knows it's just a madhouse traveling right now you can't get flights the flights are unbelievably expensive we could not find a flight to the bahamas on wednesday uh for under eighteen hundred dollars and it had a seven hour layover and so it's going to cost us a little bit more money but we got a charter and the only time we could get the charter was on tuesday so they're going to get an extra day down there. We'll get there Tuesday evening. They'll get Wednesday. We'll practice in the morning, but they'll get a day on the resort. Thursday will be a day on the resort with a practice, and then we're going to have our Thanksgiving dinner together Thursday evening, and then Friday at the game starts. So, it, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be very business-like. Tuesday night and Wednesday will be, you know, more fun, and then Thursday we'll, we'll start the routine. So, yeah, it, it should be a great trip that – very fortunate that they get a chance to go, but they got to understand there's there's eight. If you count us as a good team, there's eight really good teams down there. There's no slouch down there, so we could we could play great and be on three, and surely no one wants that. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that as far as the X's and O's go coming up in the next segment of the show. But Kemp, and I think that's something too. These holiday tournaments, and we're always we've been everywhere from Chicago to Alaska, and coming up to the Bahamas, and Florida, and all that kind of stuff. People, I think, sometimes don't realize that these things are very, very regimented, and, and there's a there's a lot going on. You play three basketball games, three Division One basketball games in three days. There's a lot of turning and burn. Yeah, and you've got to take care of your bodies. You got to eat right, and you know they they don't get a lot of time to go sightseeing or lay in the sun and that. And you surely don't want them laying in the sun because of what that does. It zaps the energy from your 
body. So there, it, there'll be a regiment. We'll have study hall, study table while we're down there. It, it's once Thursday gets there, it'll be more of a business trip. So they got to have their fun Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, that's the way that it shakes out. Uh, Natalie asked with the hashtag Ask Camping. Uh, you touched on it a little bit. Uh, how are you guys celebrating Thanksgiving in the Bahamas? What's the particulars? Well, uh, <laughs> part of the deal is we set up a Thanksgiving dinner, so there'll be a traditional meal. And the 10 people that are charter this year, we have, we, have, we sold 10 seats on it. And those people will have the part of their the package was they'll have dinner with us. So I'm sure there'll be some parents down there in that that will have come over for that. And then, you know, the, the, in, when you're a, a college division one basketball player, holidays really don't exist. Um, you know, we, we practice Christmas Day. We, you know, we're usually traveling over Thanksgiving and that. So it's part of the regimen. It's part of the deal as, as a, you know, as a parent. Uh, when, when I had my boys, I, I tried really hard to make those holidays special for them, but I wasn't really around. And, um, you know, my staff, I worry about that. And you know, a lot of them have young kids and that. But the bottom line is, is when you sign up for this, this is part of it. You work every week for six months. You work every weekend. You have no holidays. It's, it's your job. Now, May and August, and then are pretty good, you know. Get a break, but there aren't a lot of holidays in May, and, right. you know. So, um, Memorial Day's hype. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so that's just the way it is. So, and I don't think, you know, it's like I tell them New Year's Eve. I tell them, guys, you're going to have 60 more New Year Eve, New Year's Eves, so you can do whatever the hell you want to do. But this New Year's Eve, you're going to be in bed at this time. You're, you know, it's just, it's just the way it is. And, they all, they're all accepting of that because they have dreams and goals and they know it's all part of the deal. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, Kip, when you look at it too, oh, I did want to ask you this personally too. Um, Rocket Watts, we saw him obviously spend a lot of time with, with Chris Curran uh, during the Eastern Michigan. What, you got any status updates? Somebody asked me about that. So. No, he didn't practice today. Um, I would think he'll be able to play down there. You know, he hasn't practiced in a couple of weeks and uh, that the cramping probably led from him not having practiced. The building was full. It was hot in there. It was emotional. You, everybody that was there knows what it was. And I think that, that you know, his body cramped up. And, um, so now he's, had, he's still got his foot problem. He's got the cramp problem now. And so, he didn't practice today. Probably won't practice tomorrow. I hope I'll get him a day or two before before we play. So, um, you know, it's been it's been tough. It's really been tough. You know, it's there's a lot of ways to. And this this sounds like an excuse, and it's not. But think of your business. Let's say you are in a in, you're the head of sales at some company, and you have a sales meeting on Monday, and half your staff isn't at the meeting. And then on Wednesday, you have something come up that you have to tell everybody and you don't even know who's going to be there. And you try and explain the, the new technique or the new thing you're selling. And then on Friday, you got to sell it and you don't even know, you know, who on your staff's going to show up. And do they understand what the new stuff is you're going to sell? Yeah. And that would be a very similar, uh, similar it's a good comp, yeah. to what we're going through right now is, you know, we're prepping for Long Beach State and Rocket and, and Jalen probably won't go through any of that prep other than the film. We put some new slides in in our zone. As we play the zone more, we're learning what this group of kids can do well. And so we're changing some slides in that in the zone. And they see it on film, they hear us, but they're not getting the reps of doing it. And in this business, reps are very important. That's why you practice. And so it's going to be a while. It, our improvement is going to be a slow improvement until we get everybody back in play. Uh, there was a second part to Danielle's Ask Campy question. And this has become a staple, the Greg Campy show, the week of Thanksgiving, something that we've talked about a lot. No. Have you had any movement in the favorite Thanksgiving dish? Anything no. new lately? Or no, I haven't even thought about Thanksgiving, but I had the best fried chicken sandwich I've ever had in my life the other day. So. Oh, really? Yeah, I tweeted it out. You don't. You don't follow my. I don't, I don't get the alert. Well, you don't follow me, Ken. So oh, that's better. I that's better you. that I don't. Um, <laughs> I talk. So, I talk too much soccer for you. I'm yeah. Sure. So you know, I I haven't even really thought in the. You know, I'm not going to get to cook or be around it. So I haven't thought about it. But I go back to the staple. The 
jalapeno mashed potatoes are still the best of Thanksgiving. <laughs> that's that's what it is. Yeah, and my wife's not a big jalapeno fan, so I, I tried to get you know you, you broke down the recipe a couple of years yeah. ago. I tried to get her to cave in, but she wouldn't cave into it. So there was uh, there was nothing we could do there. Uh, let's take our last break, and when we do, we'll come back and we'll preview uh, the tournament down in the Bahamas. And uh, as you talked about, a very very high quality field. So we will do that. We'll be back in the last segment of the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. He's Coach Greg Campy. My name is Neil Rule. Happy you are with us. Big hello to everybody that came out here to RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills as well as we get the holiday weekend rolling strong. And remember, the Greg Campy Show is brought to you by Henry Ford Sports Medicine, the official team physicians for Oakland University, and you. For more information, visit henryford.com backslash athletes and the Pino Insurance Agency, LLC. Mimic Insurance. They cater to the educational market. If you're looking for affordable insurance and a knowledgeable insurance agency, go online to P-I-N-O. That's PinoInsurance.com today. So camp, everybody in attendance here has received a raffle ticket. What are we giving away? Well, it's a Pistons theme Golden Grizzlies pullover. That was featured at Little Caesars Arena during the Oakland University night. We have one we're giving away. And everybody that's here in the house. So remember, Cam, it pays to come out to the Greg Campy Show. It does. Absolutely, it does. It does. You so to meet Trey Thompson. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> um, let me give you the number uh, that is out there right now so everybody get those raffle tickets ready. It is 684. Everyone's got that one. I'm just playing. Uh, 26. Nine. Yeah! No way. No way. Yes. He's the guy that was begging for it. <laughs> as, as and there's more than one person here. So I, for those guys, <laughs> that's crazy that you won. Absolutely. Yes, did you do that on purpose? <laughs> He's not the best promotions man in the business for now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> while, we're on, while we're just talking, we heard from Barb, and, and he's home from the hospital, Great. and it appears that he just looks like a bout of COVID. Okay. So while that's never good, it's still a lot better than what it could have been. So we're glad to hear that. We're going to miss you on the trip, and we miss you here. I don't know if I've ever had a radio show where they weren't here, so. I think you're not. I think you might be. Yeah, I think you might be all right. Their perfect attendance might have just ended. Yeah. Well, they checked in. So I over think seven I, years. Yeah, yeah I, think I think that counts. I, right. that. I think that counts. Um, this weekend, camp the Nassau Championship down there in the Bahamas. 
a big time matchup against Long Beach State. I was talking with Trey about it. The defending Big West regular season champions. They've been to the NIT a couple of times. A very, very good basketball team. They're a problem. Yeah. Um, it'll be really interesting because they're not a great perimeter shooting team. And if they shoot 40 some percent from the three against us, we're really going to have to take a look at ourselves, you know, because they're not a good perimeter team. They're, they're the team that scares me in that they throw it up to the rim and go get it back. You know, they're, they've got guards that can penetrate. They can score the ball off the dribble. And when they throw it up in the air, they got guys that can go get it. So, that's the type of team that scares me the most uh, with, with what we have this year. So it's good that we get to play a team like that before we get into the league. Bowling Green was similar to that, although, you know, Bowling Green had a great shooting night against us, which was the difference in the game. Um, so we'll see. You know, BG had 20 offensive rebounds. If Long Beach State has 20 offensive rebounds, we're going to be in trouble. You know, we've got to learn from it and get better. Yeah, and they have uh, – some NBA bloodlines on the roster too. Oldham Polonese's son, Chase Polonese, plays for them. A uh, couple of guards that, that can really score the basketball. Joel Murray had a 30-point game against UCLA last year. Uh, J. Don Jones was the Big West defensive player last year as, as a freshman. So, yeah, they, they have some very talented pieces. Now they're good. They're good. Everybody at this tournament's good. Um, I, I look back at last year's Thanksgiving tournament and Akron was in that field and they lost and they lost. And I think they beat Evansville in the, in the consolation champ, you know, the, the eighth place game, seventh, eighth place game. And Akron went to the NCAA tournament on the Mac and the Mac's pretty damn good conference. And so that just shows how strong these fields are. And you, you learn from it at this time of the year, you know, we won that championship and we didn't go to the tournament. Akron finished it was in the last place game and they went. And so that's what this is about. Learn a lot about us and get ready because a week after we've got Cleveland State and Fort Wayne late games. And so it's really, really important we get through the weekend healthy and that we learn about ourselves and get ready for those two games the following week. Uh, and in your pod uh, with the Golden Grizzlies, Long Beach State, North Texas, San Jose State on the other side of that. I think we've talked about this in the past camp, but we alluded to it a little bit earlier, but just the what goes into that? You you have you have a coach on a North Texas scout. You have a coach on the San Jose State scout. And obviously, you know you're only going to use one of those, but no stone is left unturned. No, and and we've been they've known their job before the season started. They've done their film work. They've done their clips. Everything's clipped and ready to go. We'll also watch those games live while we're there, which is the only time you can scout live our in tournaments. So that gives you an added. Uh, uh, advantage, although you don't get a day of prep, you know, you, you play the next day. So it, a lot of guys will scout the hell out of it and try and make the adjustments and spend time. We really don't do that at this time of the year. If that were the postseason tournament, we do it. But at this time of the year, it's more about us and rest and let's get through it. And, you know, our base defense, what did they do against us? And then how can we fix it if somebody else does that against us? So that's what we do. Uh, sometimes it works. Last year it worked. You know, we won the tournament. Sometimes it doesn't work. So, <laughs> but that's we, pretty much coaching in a nutshell. Yeah, but we want to stay consistent, and give the same message to the players that the real games, the real important one, is that December first and December third against Cleveland State and Fort Wayne, and then we get to go back and play. You know, then they get their fun games: Michigan State, Syracuse, Boise. They'll get that as part of the schedule. So it's done all with a purpose. And like I said, sometimes you look like a genius and sometimes you'll scratch your head and say, why did I do this? <laughs> On the other side, uh, Vermont, who was in the tournament with, uh, with us last season down in Florida, they will take on Ball State. And then Missouri State on the other side, where Keith, Her where Keith Hervey transferred from, uh, they will square up with UNC Wilmington. So that is the field. That's how it is set. And, uh, you know, we leave tomorrow. That's about it. Right? Can't wait. Can't wait to get down there. 85 degree weather see how we play you know I, I i know the players are looking forward to it everybody's looking forward to it yeah no question about that the the, the tournament the, they call these uh they're exempt tournaments more or less I, what does that mean camp how are these things shaped up how do you get in these things well the exempt tournament came to be it, it actually is an mte is a multiple team event is what it is and it gives you multiple games that don't count um 
in your scheduling limitations. So you're allowed 29 games and an a, and a empty or 28 games in an MTE, which can be th three games, or you could play 29 in an MTE with two games. So you get the 31 games that way. If you don't play in an MTE, you can only play 29 times. And so most teams want to play in the MTE so that they can get the extra games. I do it uh, depending on how, like next year for, to put ourselves in a position to get a good seed and have a great schedule and get a good RPI or net, you want to play so many quad one and quad two games. Next year, the reason we're going to the Cayman Islands is because Wake Forest and, and Old Miss are there. And so now that's opportunities to play quad one and quad two teams on a neutral floor. You know, your chances of winning those games are a hell of a lot better on a neutral floor than they are. You would like to say they were a lot better at home, but we didn't do that last Saturday, two Saturdays ago. We kind of blew that situation, but uh, that's why you schedule these things. This, the last two years, we've scheduled to mid-major MTEs because we had such strong schedules. Next year, you know, our schedule is looking, uh, we're going to have Bowling Green at home again, and we've got Toledo at home next year. And those will probably be our only two non-league home games. We'll be in this MTE, and then we'll be playing mostly Power 5 teams because we have really high expectations in our team next year as we grow. And we lose Keaton and, and Jalen, but if everybody stays, get everybody, you know, all those guys back, we have a good, we hit the portal and get a good big or a good, you know, we, we signed a really good big last week, uh, 6'10 kids. So our, we have high expectations. So we want to play as many quad ones and quad twos as we can to help us with scheduling net. You know, if we make the MSA tournament, we'll see those types of things. So it's all thought of in advance. And uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You know, right now, I wish we weren't in. Uh, the level of tournament we're in right now because I'd like to go play a couple, you know, schools with 350 RPIs that we can get a little winning streak going just because, you know, the schedule, there is no, after the Defiance game, there's not a blip. There's nobody that isn't really good. I mean, every team we play is really good. Even the beginning of the horizon, we get top end of the horizon. We play the, the, the two teams that tied for first on the road, you know, so there's no... You know, there's no easy one. There's no chance to not play well and still get a win. And that's bothersome to me. But it is what it is. got to get through it. Yeah. Um, as, as we're sitting here at our at RJ's pub in Rochester Hills, obviously they have the TVs around everywhere. The Maui Invitation. You were there once, right? We were in that, but we were in what was called the Mini Maui. We didn't get to go and play in that thing. But we did go in the, in the year 2002 or one. we went and played in the Hawaii Hilo tournament. Oh, that's what it was, Hawaii Hilo. Yeah, the Hawaii Hilo tournament. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, seven days in Hawaii, it's going to be fun. <laughs> what's, what's, a, what's a favorite one you ever been in? Favorite tournament? Yeah. Wow. Why you got to ask me such a hard no, I don't know. I, I can't even remember half of the yeah. ones we've been in. What would you think of Alaska when we were in the Alaska shootout? That might have been. That, that was up, be there, up there. That, that was just because I'd never been to Alaska and it was so cool up there and seeing all the wildlife. That trip we went on with yeah. the team and saw the wildlife and the bald eagle and all that kind of stuff up close was, was pretty was pretty cool. So it's, yeah, I would say that was close. It, it was just so weird. The, the sun comes up at 10 a.m. and it sets at 2 p.m. and it's it's only sunny like it's sunny at nine o'clock on a summer night. It's not like Sunny, sunny. So I thought that was kind of weird. Like Michigan, Ohio State was on, and it was dark, and it was eight a.m. That was kind of weird. Yeah, it was. And the, the best part of the Alaskan tournament was the, that one restaurant. They did. Oh. <laughs> did we Alaskan king crab that night or what? Forever. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say that's probably the best tournament. <laughs> you started to put it all back together. Yeah, now, huh? yeah. <laughs> um, your final minute and a half. Of the show camp, you know, what, what else you got? One minute, actually. So. You know, I, I just want to thank, you know, obviously the people here at the show every week and that. Um, but I, I just want to throw a shout out to the students. I mean, it, they were incredible. I, I, it, for three straight weeks, I mean, we played Defiance College on a Monday night at 530 and that 
the student section was rocking and packed. And, and then the fact that after the game Saturday, 15 minutes after the game, nobody had left. Yeah. You know, that, that was just really, it made me an old guy feel pretty cool about the whole situation. And, and it, it, it was really, really gratifying to me to see that. All right, well, that'll wrap things up here for the Greg Campy Show. I'll talk to you on Friday night in the Bahamas on the Odyssey app. We'll have the Golden Grizzlies and Long Beach State. So for the coach, Greg Campy, and our producer back in our Odyssey studios, Greg Hessen. My name is Neil Rule. Thanks, everybody, for coming out to the Greg Campy Show live from RJ's Club in Rochester Hills. Bye. See you later.